So now that we have this precise definition of a limit, uh, I want to look at some specific examples, right, uh, and see how we can use this to, to find limits, not to find limits, but to show numbers are a limit for a function at a certain x value. And the method goes like this. We're going to start with this inequality, f of x minus l is less than epsilon. And now remember, we're going to know what f of x is, that's our function, and we're going to know what l is. We're going to have some number that we're pretty sure is the limit, and we're looking to show that it is. Right, so once we've solved this, we're going to end up with something that's going to be a number less than x, less than another number. Right, so what that's going to tell me is every x value in that interval gets mapped into this interval. Right, you remember visually how this works. I've got a little example over here. If I think the limit is 3, then we go up epsilon and down epsilon, and we need a corresponding interval over here that maps into it. So I'm trying to find uh, deltas down here. Now, there's a little problem. Okay, there's a little problem. Uh, this interval that I come up with, this solution to the inequality, it may not be symmetric, okay, where, where my uh, interval on the y-axis is up epsilon and down epsilon. My interval on the x-axis, it may not be as nice. It may be just a little bit down here and a lot up here. And that's a problem because I need this to be symmetric. I need to have this same down a little and up a little on the x-axis that I have on the y-axis. And that's easy enough to fix. I'm just going to take whichever one of these distances is the smallest, and that becomes my, eps, uh, my uh, delta. Because if every x in this interval gets mapped into my y interval, then every x in here also does. And that one has that nice symmetry that, that I need. OK, so, so let's look at a specific example here. I've got. Uh, I want to show that the limit as x approaches 4 of the square root of x is equal to 2. All right, so remember what our method says. Our method says look at the absolute value of f of x minus l less than epsilon and solve this for x. All right, well, let, first, let's do some substitution. I'm going to put the square root of x in here for f and 2 in here for l. And I need to solve this equation. All right, so how can I do that? Well, look, remember how we solve absolute value inequalities. Um, this is going to be negative epsilon less than the square root of x minus 2 less than positive epsilon. And I can do this. Right, move the 2, right? Add 2 to all three parts. 2 minus epsilon is less than the square root of x is less than 2 plus epsilon, and then square all the sides, square all three parts. 2 minus epsilon less than x less than, whoops, I left off the squared. 2 plus epsilon squared. Okay, so so what is this telling me? This is telling me that if, if I look down here, right, on my x-axis, and if I go to 2 minus epsilon squared and 2 plus epsilon squared, every number in here is getting mapped into this interval on the y-axis. Now, this, this is nice, but right, remember what we need to do. We need to find a delta, right? I need to say delta equals something. So look, 2 is in here somewhere, right? 2 is in here someplace. So what I need is my delta is going to be either this distance or this distance, whichever one is smaller, right? Because I, 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 then it'll be from here to here, for example, will be my actual final interval. So it, what, what am I saying? Well, I'm saying and there, there's it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but look, this distance here is 2 minus 
2 minus epsilon squared. And this distance here is 2 plus epsilon squared minus 2. So what, what's my delta? I'm going to need a little more room than that. Delta equals the minimum of 2 minus 2 minus epsilon squared and 2 plus epsilon squared minus 2, whatever that comes out to. Um, okay, so that, that's kind of the, the general approach. Let's see if we can uh, take another look at this. And I'm going to actually do it with numbers this time. You notice the, the key difference here is I have a number in here in the epsilon position. All right, so I'm going to do this with numbers, and let's see what happens. Now we're going to, and just to be clear, our answer is going to be an actual numeric value for delta. Okay, you know, if the, 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 this is the way that the textbook, word, a lot of textbooks word this, so I'm kind of trying to match that. But, you know, it, we're given a function f of x. We're given a value for l. That's the proposed limit. And we're given a value for C. So really, if you put this in the limit notation, this is saying the limit square root of X, X approaches 4, equals 2. It's just kind of piece it out for you, right? Giving you all the individual components. So I'm going to start just the way I started before. I'm going to start absolute value of F of X minus L is less than... Point one, and I got to solve this, right? So I'm going to put the square root of x minus two in here. And now, how do we solve it in any absolute value inequality? This is negative 0 0.1 less than the square root of x minus two is less than 0 0.1. All right, so I'm going to follow a very similar process, right? I'm going to add two to all three parts, plus two, plus two, and plus two. Uh, two minus 0 0.01 is 1.9. And this becomes less than the square root of x, less than uh, 2.1. And now I'm almost there. Now I have to square both sides. Uh, square, I keep saying, so you say both sides with the regular equation. All three parts, right? So this is going to be squared, squared, and squared. Now 1.9 squared is 3.61, less than x, less than 2.1 squared. That's 4.41. Okay, there is my open interval. Every x value between 3.61 and 4.41 gets mapped into a number that is closer uh, to 2 than 0 0.1. Okay, great. But that's not quite it. I'm not done because I'm, I'm looking for a delta. Right, so let, let, me, let me sketch this. I'm a very visual person. I like to get a picture. Right, so I've got 3.61 down here, and I've got 4.41 up here, and I've got my actual target number, x equals 4, here somewhere in the middle. Okay, what are the distances? The distance from 4 to 4.41 is 0 0.41, and the distance from 4 to 3.61 is 0 0.39. My delta is the smaller of the two. It's 0 0.39. So x minus delta is here. x plus delta is just 4.39. So if every x value in this big interval gets mapped to within a tenth of my limit, then every number in this smaller interval also does, and this smaller interval has that symmetry. It's x plus a number, x minus the same number, right? So that's going to be my delta value.
for this particular value of epsilon. All right, so let me give you one. All right, take a look at this. Um, see if you can't walk through the same process. Pause the slides. All right, see if you can't walk through. Find the delta that corresponds to that epsilon. Okay, so let's see how this works. Uh, I'm going to follow the same process. I'm going to do absolute value f of x minus l is less than 0.2. And let's put my, my function in here. f of x is x squared minus 1. l is equal to 3, less than 0 0.2. Okay, now we're going to solve the absolute value inequality. So this is negative 0 0.2 is less than, and let's add these together, right? 3 minus 1, that's 2. So this is x squared plus 2 is, whoops, sorry, that's, that's, I was subtracting here, right? That's minus 3. So minus 1 minus 3 is minus 4 is less than 0 0.2. Now let's add 4 to both sides. Uh, to all three sides, all three parts. So 3.8 is less than x squared is less than 4.2. Now we're almost there. Take the square root of all three parts. Square root of 3.8 is 1.949. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of 4.2 is 2.049. And there's my interval. Right, there's my interval. Every x value between 1.949 and 2.049 gets mapped to a number closer to 3 than 0.2. Okay, now remember, this is my, this is my answer, though. My answer was find a delta. All right, so look at what we've got now. Right, I've got 1.949. And I have 2.049, and I have x equals equals 2 here somewhere in the middle. And what are the distances? Well, the distance here is uh, 0 0.049, and the distance here is 0 0.05. I'm doing this in my head, uh, 0 0.051. Which one is smaller, right? That's this one here. So that's going to be my delta. Delta equals 0 0.049. And that's what I was asked for, right? Find a value of delta. There it is. And the question's done. Okay. So. Here, it, it, there's a few fine points I, I want you to be aware of. First, um, this definition is, is nice. It, it does what we need it to do, but it isn't what's called constructive, right? In other words, it doesn't give us a method for figuring out what L was. It assumes we already have a number in mind that we think is the limit, and then we go about showing that we were right, okay? Uh, that's nice, but... In general, it's not very it's not very practical, right? Because I need a way to find out the limit, okay? And and even once we have this L, it still isn't a very practical tool to have it, 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 as a working tool, as a working method for confirming limits. Because those absolute value inequalities, I pick nice ones, okay? Uh, those absolute value inequalities very quickly, even for relatively straightforward functions. Uh, are somewhere between problematic to solve all the way up to impossible to solve, right? So, um, what, what, what good? I'm sitting, I'm sitting here bad mouthing it, right? What good is this thing? Well, in in the next in the next several lectures, what we're what we're going to do is we're going to do what we often do in mathematics. We're going to take a, a definition that, that kind of we were, I hate to put it this way, but that we were stuck with based on what we needed it to do. And come up with methods that are easier to use. Come up with some theorems. Come up with some formulas 
that let us easily find actual limits for actual functions. And that's where this definition is, is going to prove to be useful, right? It's, it's going to be useful for showing uh, that these new and improved methods are valid and really are giving us the actual limits that we need.